Welcome to Ben Reviews. And when I was a kid, egg in somebody's house was considered kitty fun, not vandalism. As we continue Oktoberfest, it's time for me to do negative things towards Halloween related things. So, let's talk about the Twilight series. It trucking sucks. Why? Because it took vampires, who for centuries were seen as evil, monstrous, dark, cunning, and mysterious, and made them hairspray-addicted, sparkling love machines that cater to preteen girls who the closest they'll ever get to real love is getting paper cuts for licking pictures of Robert Pattinson. However, for some odd reason, the Twilight series has become hugely popular among said preteen girls who are too lazy to look at a magazine of male pinup models. So, it makes sense the parodies of the series would eventually be made. So, it makes perfect sense that parodies of this series would eventually be made. And there was a spoof movie made of it. Oh goody, if this is in the right hands, like Mel Brooks or Zucker Abrams and Zucker, then this will be hilarious. Oh, truck my life! These guys directed it? Who keeps giving these guys money to make crappy spoof movies? Who? Who? Well, this is going to be painful. Wait, let me get this straight. I'm reviewing a movie that thinks it's a comedy that's pairing a movie that thinks it's romantic. What does that have to do with Halloween? Well, it's about vampires, and vampires are associated with Halloween, so I guess it works. Anyway, get ready to think the Twilight movies aren't as bad. Here is my review of Vampires Suck. So, we start off with a parody of the near ending of New Moon, where Bella, excuse me, her name's Becca in this movie, is trying to stop Edward from exposing his sparkling body to a mass of people. However, as Becca's trying to stop Edward, a war breaks out between Edward and Jacob fans, so Becca has to jump over and fight. WAIT A MINUTE! A fight between Edward and Jacob fans breaks out? The truck? Okay, so this movie is parodying a movie series, but it's also parodying the fans of the movie series it's parodying? How the truck does that work? When you spoof a movie, you don't spoof the fans, you spoof the movie, you trucking idiots! The fans have nothing to do with the movie itself. They're just fans. Oh my gosh. We're only two minutes in and this movie is already hurting my head with how moronic it is. However, this movie is just under 80 minutes. So there's more to come. <laughs> there's more to come. So, it cuts to the beginning of the first Twilight movie as Becca is riding in the car with her dad, Frank, who's played by... Diedrich, 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 what are you doing? Are you this desperate for work that you have to be in a low-budget spoof movie? You were in the Drew Carey show. You deserve better than this. Anyway, Becca rides around in the car, and it shows that there are vampires running all around the town of Sporks. Okay, this is where these spoof movies fail. Their jokes are over-exaggerated! When it comes to satire, exaggeration is one of the main aspects that makes satires work. But, you can't go too far with it, otherwise it gets ridiculous and unfunny. This is a perfect example of how these guys take exaggeration too far as they try to claim that Forks and the Twilight movies was completely populated by vampires. Even the name of the school sports team are the Sporks Bloodsuckers. Subtle, isn't it? Anyway, Frank takes Becca to his house and shows her her room, which has a bunch of baby stuff all over it. Again, over-exaggerating. The dad wasn't that overprotective of Bella in the Twilight movies. He even puts a binky on her mouth and carries her outside in one of those baby holders that moms put around their chests. Once again, great subtlety! So, Becca meets Jacob and Jacob's dad, as Frank and Jacob's dad break into an unnecessary fight in the background. This is where the spoof movies done by Seltzerberg fail too. UNFUNNY SLAPSTICK! Again, slapstick is my favorite type of comedy, but when it lacks timing, execution, and goes on forever, it's just not funny. Watch the Three Stooges and Looney Tunes cartoons to know how to make slapstick work, you friggin' morons! So, Becca goes to school and gets picked on because she's the new kid. This is the closest this movie gets to a funny joke. 
but misses the mark completely. In Twilight, Bella was well respected even though she was the new kid at the school. That's one of the faults of that movie. However, they do the exact opposite in this one, so it doesn't come off as being funny, just not making any sense. When it comes to spoofing, you don't do the exact opposite of what you're making fun of, you comedically mimic it in some way. Like I said, they were so close, but so far. So, Becca instantly makes new friends, contradicting the joke they were trying to make earlier as she sits down in the lunchroom and the Solons walk in, and make out with each other. Incest is supposed to be funny, right? Well, it's not. So, when science class comes around, Becca has to sit down with Edward. In the midst of some unfunny dialogue, Becca says that she doesn't like cold, wet things. Edward then replies, then you must hate Slurpees, and he pulls out a Slurpee and sips it. Um, that's not funny. He's just drinking a Slurpee. There's really no comedic element in that. He's just slurping a Slurpee. Moving on, the three evil vampires meet up with the fishermen, and they say they're hungry. So, the fisherman offers them Cheetos, and the black vampire eats them. Okay, from now on, I'm just going to keep track of all the pop culture references this movie makes. Let's see, that's one, and there was a Jersey Shore reference and a Dear John reference that happened earlier that I didn't mention. And, I guess I'll count the Slurpee joke. So, that's up to four pop culture jokes. So, the fisherman thinks that the three evil vampires are the Black Eyed Peas. Ding! The fisherman then has a short and unfunny fight scene with the white vampire, and the fisherman is eaten. Back with the unfunny parody of the unintentionally funny relationship, Edward saves Becca from the van that almost hits her by using Becca's Asian friend to cushion the blow. Wow, think of all the comedic possibilities they could have used for this scene, and they blew it on unnecessary slapstick. Afterwards, Becca is narrating to herself, and the girl from Gossip Girl starts to narrate over her. Ding! Frank then tells Becca about the killing of the fisherman, and Frank thinks the Kardashians are behind it. Ding! Come on, movie! You're not even trying! These are the kind of jokes that unfunny internet reviewers make. Anyway, Frank wants to make sure Becca is protected, so he asks her to beat him up, and she proceeds to do so. You know... I would love to keep track of all the pointless slapstick this movie has too, but I don't care for this movie enough. That night, Edward is watching Bella as she sleeps. Oh man, think of all the great comedy they could get out of... Oh, who am I kidding? It's Seltzerberg. So, Becca sleep talks, and she says things that include TiVo Wizards of Waverly Place. Ding! These numbers of pop culture references are going up quicker than an episode of Family Guy. Ding! Hey, that doesn't count! I'm an internet reviewer! I'm, I'm not this movie! I have an excuse to make jokes like that. That's better. As this scene ends, Becca farts and causing Edward to fall out of the window. Hmm, I didn't know they were making this movie for 12-year-olds. The next day, Edward takes Becca to the woods and tells her who he really is. Becca thinks he's a Jonas brother. Ding! Oh, come on, movie! They weren't even famous anymore when this was made. So... Edward says he's a vampire, and Becca holds up a box of Count Chocula. Ding! Now this is a pop culture reference I can enjoy. Hello, favorite character. Becca then drops the box. Goodbye, favorite character. Edward then heads toward the sunlight and prepares to reveal himself. Wow, think of all the comedic... I'm getting my hopes up again, ain't I? So, Edward goes into the sun and reveals his bling. Ding! I'm counting that. Edward then goes on saying what he does as a vampire, saying he only hunts animals and the real housewives of Atlanta. Ding! Edward then asks Becca to the prom. That night, Edward goes into Becca's room and Becca thinks they're going to roleplay, so she puts on an Obama mask. Ding! She soon takes it off as Edward and Becca kiss, but then go a little further. There's nothing else m worth mentioning about this scene besides the fact Becca says something about Stephanie Meyer's Twitter page. Ding! I'm counting that as two references due to Twitter and Stephanie Meyer. Meanwhile, Frank is pursuing the evil vampires. His pursuit is unsuccessful, as he still thinks it's the Kardashians. Jacob's dad then says he's missing the big picture, and proceeds to hold up a big picture of the evil vampires next to the dead fishermen. I've got nothing. Please continue. So, 
Edward takes Becca to the Solon house to meet the Solons. Becca then gets a paper cut, and she bleeds in a very over-exaggerated way, causing the Solon family members to go after her. Edward stops the Solons with... tanning beds. Just go with it. And in the midst of this, Becca says she never should have partied with Lindsay Lohan. Ding! Not only is that another pop culture reference, but what does that have to do with anything? Becca then rides on Edward's back as Edward's riding a Segway. They talk, and Edward has to go away, so Edward tells Becca not to do anything reckless, and Becca says that she won't date Chris Brown. Ding! Edward rides away, and Becca whines until the bad vampires find her. Becca gets out her pepper spray, and she accidentally sprays... Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Ding! Buffy says that she's there to help. And she proceeds to walk away. Yes, I'm going to help you out by not helping you. Seriously, what the truck? So, the bad vampires attack, and Edward comes back all of a sudden and fights off the vampires. Becca was bitten, and Edward sucks out the venom. Wait, since when do vampires have venom? Anyway, he sucks out the venom and leaves again. Okay, this movie's really getting its plot points mixed up when it comes to the series it's trying to parody. Anyway, Becca mopes for months about Edward being gone. To see how full of angst she is, Frank uses an angst detector, and guess what kind of ratings it has on it? That's right! Pop culture references! iCarly, ding! One Tree Hill, ding! Sixteen and Pregnant, ding! And even Becca's own name is on the detector. That doesn't make any amount of sense, especially for a spoof movie, but I don't give a crap because I'm about done with this movie. Frank says that Becca is full of angst more than the secret life of the American teenager. Ding! Which is something that wasn't even listed on the detector. So, Frank proceeds to tell Becca how much she sucks, so Becca goes out with her friend, and they walk by a movie theater that says, Breaking Dawn now playing? The truck? Okay, so let me get this straight. In this own little world you're setting up where you're trying to parody the Twilight series, the Twilight series exists in it? That is freaking stupid! When you're making a spoof movie, you don't make the thing you're spoofing exist in your spoof. That's not how it works! Could you imagine if in Young Frankenstein, Boris Karloff playing the monster actually walked in on Frankenstein and the monster's dance number? No, you couldn't. You know why? Because Young Frankenstein is a good spoof movie, unlike this freaking piece of crap movie that thinks it's funny by making pop culture references, over-exaggerations, pointless slapstick, and using humor that only people with one too many chromosomes would find funny! <sighs> oh, and I almost forgot. Ding! So, as they're walking by the theater, Becca's friend spoils the ending of Breaking Dawn, and the Twilight fans waiting outside get mad for being spoiled. Um, is this movie trying to imply that Twilight fans are idiots? Twilight is a book series as well, so most of the fans of the movies have read the books and already know the ending. You morons. So, Becca eventually starts to hang out with Jacob, they fix the motorcycle together, and she rides on it while singing a song. Edward appears and says, Stop singing like Taylor Swift. Ding! Skipping ahead, Becca runs into the black vampire, but Jacob and his pack show up and dance to this. Cable Access, Channel 62, presents Noon on Film. I'm Blaine Edward, and I'm Antoine Mayweather, and, and welcome, welcome to Men on Films, the show that looks at movies from a male point of view. Oh, how I wish I was watching in living color rather than this. So, Jacob's pack have an unfunny dance scene at the tune of that song, and then they kill the black vampire. Becca falls in love with Jacob. Meanwhile, Edward is sitting somewhere and watching The Fly. Ding! That is a great movie, though, that I wish I was watching instead of... Oh, you know. So, Rosalind confronts Edward, and... Lady Gaga appears out of nowhere. Ding! Hey, remember that scene in the new moon where Lady Gaga appeared out of nowhere? Probably not, because you probably haven't seen the movie, but I have, and I don't! So, Edward is convinced to be with Becca again. At Becca's house, Jacob is with her, and she asks why he's shirtless. Jacob says that it's in his contract that he has to take off his shirt every 10 minutes. Oh my gosh. 
We're not idiots, Seltzerberg. You don't have to explain the jokes for us. You could have simply just had Jacob frequently appear without his shirt. It would have been funny by the sheer fact that he appears shirtless in the movies a lot. But, of course, you guys aren't funny, so you have to explain the jokes because the people who watch your movies are so dumb that they need to have the jokes explained to them. So, Edward calls Becca's house, and Jacob says she's dead. So, Edward's going to kill himself. Rosalind picks up Becca, and they go to stop Edward. Edward shows his butt, and everybody laughs. Yeah, because butts are funny all of a sudden. And... What follows is a bunch of unfunny fight and dance scenes with a Slim Jim joke thrown in there. Ding! And it ends with Edward eventually biting Becca. Wow, folks. Just wow. Never could I think a spoof of Twilight could fail so much as this movie does. Again, it's Seltzerberg. They don't try to be clever, subtle, or funny. They just throw in pop culture references that aren't funny now, and they're not going to be funny two years from now, pointless slapstick that makes me feel bad that I love slapstick, and jokes that take over-exaggeration to a new level. There are so many missed opportunities with how some of these jokes could have been played out in this movie. But again, it's freaking Seltzerberg! So, I really don't think I have to tell my fans this, but don't waste your time with this piece of crap Twilight parody. You're better off just watching the movies by themselves. Though I wouldn't recommend that either because they suck too. Anyway, I'm Ben and I'm signing out. I'm going to go read the Twishite book series, which are better satires of Twilight than this piece of truck spit movie.